Uh, a lady over here had a question. Do you have questions? Oh, I was, I was really intrigued when you said that so very many people don't know how to read and play. And I was like, no. <coughs> Okay, let me start. Uh, <laughs> Let's go one at a time down the end, why don't we? How to read a play? Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. Brad said that. Yeah, I said that. <laughs> um, they all agreed with me though. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm going to pass on it. Somebody hear their answers. Uh, I'll say my answer is that sometimes when, uh, uh, when I, I, I start off as an actor, and so in a way my brain still sits there, even though I don't think I'm, you know, I'll just say I don't do that anymore very often. Um, I'll, if I'm on a jury, if I'm reading a bunch of scripts or something, sometimes I need to read the whole damn thing out loud. <laughs> because that's the way, that's the way that I can understand it. Yes, until it's read out loud. And, and then that's the way that I can process it. And to that end, I'll be honest, writing the ready, when I submit them to councils and things like that, knowing that the, the jury committee may not be made up of people who, first of all, may not know how to read a libretto, I write, I say, Try to imagine this, and, and read it. reading it out loud helps because it's it's rhythmic because it's meant to be written to music. Most of what that's going to be, it's opera, is not on the page. That's the music, and so it needs to be read out loud. I'm, I'm actually quite specific, and I put that at the top of my library if I suspect it's not a music uh, panel. So that would be my answer, even for me personally. Sometimes I have to read the play out loud by myself in, in my living room. Blah, blah, blah. And also too, I mean, it's actually it's actually hard reading a play even as an actor when you're given a script to act in. Gosh, I you know I, I get a script to act in and I go I have to look read it through a couple of times, two or three times, just to comprehend what it is the player is trying to accomplish, what it is the story they're trying to tell. But the most important thing as an actor that I try to understand is how it exists in a three dimensional space. Like most importantly, like how these words are supposed to jump off off the page and what what is it? What is the player envisioning in their imagination that is going to happen in a three-dimensional space? And that's, and you know, partially it's kind of incumbent upon us to sort of give pe people reading our plays the cues that will help them understand that, but we can't, it can't just be us. And they shouldn't be artistic directors that we have to do that for. Yeah, I know. But, my, you know, in my mind the example is when an architect has a blueprint and they look at, show that blueprint to another architect, the architect has the experience and the ability to look at the blueprint and start to build what is there in three-dimensional place, a, a space. And they see elevations, and they see finishes, and they see surfaces, and that kind of thing, because they have the training and the know-all and the experience to know how to read a blueprint. For me, a play is exactly the same thing. The way you read a play is by constructing it in your head in three-dimensional space all around you and seeing you're not just looking at words of paper. What are these people doing? Why are they doing it? What is the subtext? What is the text on top? What is the through line through this play? What, are the, what is the pacing like? What is the rhythm like? These are all things that come with experience from seeing plays, reading plays, and writing plays. So that you would think with some, by the time someone gets to a, you know, running a theater, they would have some experience with that blueprint and knowing how to make it in three-dimensional space. But they don't always know how to do that. And it's very, very difficult and frustrating when you come up against that. I think, yes, uh, to add to that, um, uh, as you're reading it, uh, imagining it in, in a three-dimensional space, also allow your imagination to see the potentials of what could be possible. I think sometimes um, people can read a text and, and not see what is possible, like the, the, the you, you might, like uh, with uh, Human Remains. Um, you know, the production I saw where there was a dynamic set that um, really blew my mind, but you have to sort of, but you have to, look. when you're reading The Human Remains, you have to sort of be able to imagine a three-dimensional space and also re realize the potential of what three-dimensional space that could be. It's like music. It's like a, a, when a composer is writing music, they're hearing everything in their head. They're hearing the full orchestration. They know it's all there, but they're just putting it down on a page before it comes out. And it's the people who are going to bring it out are really important. And unfortunately, you know, that doesn't always happen with plays. And now, I'm sure we all do this. When you're writing a play for someone to read the first time, you leave stuff in it you know is going to be cut out. You overstate certain things because, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're not going to get it when you're reading it because they don't understand that actually this one line will have more impact, impact than an entire monologue. But unless you explain that line to them in a monologue, they're not going to understand that. Quite often I'll put things in that I know very well are going to come out in production, just so the reader can follow it better. Good. Okay. 
community. Yeah, what they said. <laughs> <laughs> reading it aloud is great. Like reading it aloud. And I, read, I read aloud my drafts before I, I email them off. So if I finished and I'm sending out, I read the whole thing out aloud as well before um, to my cat. Because, and before, you, you'll notice that wherever you get tired of listening to yourself, they're going to get tired of listening to <laughs> yes. yourself as well. Yes. So it's really a good thing.